Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can authorize your API gateway endpoints using AWS Cognito. So in the description, you'll find a GitHub repository for the Cognito tutorial series I've been using. If you already have a Cognito user pool, you can go ahead and use that. However, to follow along perfectly, I suggest cloning this just to get the hang of things. So here I am in uh, the eighth video tutorial. And if we go into components, we're going to create a new file called random number. We're going to import react, use state and use context from react. We're then going to export a default function. This is simply going to return some basic JSX for now. This will say random number. And here we're going to say number. So we're going to add a number variable in state. And by default, this will be zero. So now we actually want to render this. And so inside of our app.js, we can import random number and we can render it right there. So if we run npm run start in our console, it should open the website and show us the component we just created. So we see random number zero right here. So everything seems to be working. So if we head over to API gateway, we can see it have a Lambda function here. You can find the GitHub repository for this Lambda function. It simply just returns a random number between a certain boundary. If we click on the Git request, when we go to method request, we see that we have two query string parameters, minimum and maximum, and this sets the boundaries. If we go to stages and we expand this and go to our Git request and open this in a new tab, we can see that uh, we have to add in the parameters. But once we do that, this works perfectly fine. If we set a minimum to 10 and maximum to 20, if we keep refreshing, we're going to get a number between those boundaries and anyone can access this right now. So in this video, we're going to be making it so in order to access this, you have to be logged in through our Cognito user pool in order to actually run this Lambda function. So if we go to VS Code, first we want to try and get this running without the use of Cognito, and then we're going to introduce the Cognito authorization afterwards. So we're going to put this random number inside of its own div, and then we're going to create a button. This will say fetch new number, and then on click, we're going to have fetch number. So this will be a function that we create this will be an asynchronous function. Now we need to actually get the URL so we can copy this right here. We can say const URL equals this string. We're going to keep the minimum and maximum hard coded to one and 100. We're then going to go ahead and stop our console here and we're going to run npm install request dash promise. There's a number of different packages you can use to use API requests. This is the one I prefer. You can use whichever one you want. And while that's installing, we're going to go ahead and import that import RP from request dash promise. And then here we can await RP with the URL. We're going to say const number equals this. So if we console log the number, we should see what the result is from the actual API. So if we save this, if we run npm run start again. We then get our page. And if we click on fetch new number, we see 27 in the console. We click it again, we get 52, 28, 67. So it keeps going and we can see that this is working. So if we go back to our code, now we're gonna to want to try and authorize this in order to make it so you have to be logged in through Cognito. But real quick before that, we can actually use set number and pass in the number we just got. And this will actually update the string that is displayed on the page. So we see zero right here. If we click, keep clicking on this. We're gonna see that it generates a random number just as expected. So now under API gateway, we can go to authorizers on the far left here. We can create a new authorizer. We're going to select Cognito. We're going to call this Cognito. You can name it whatever you want. We want to select the user pool that you want. In my case, it's tutorial. The authorization source or the token source will be authorization. Then click on create. Go back to resources and select the method you want to actually require authentication for. You want to select method request under authorization. We want to look at this drop down. If you don't see the authorizer you just created, try refreshing. You want to select the one you just created, click on the check mark. And now the authorization should be selected to that. And we want to deploy the API under the actions drop down. Select whatever stage you wish and click on deploy. So now, if we go back to our actual API endpoints and you keep refreshing, you might have to wait a minute or two. We now see unauthorized. So that seems to have worked. So now we have to actually go into a VS code and we have to make it so. Once we're logged in, we have access to this function still. If you go into accounts.js, we see our get session method. Again, this is in the video description in the GitHub repository. 
and we can see that this returns some information about the user. One thing I want to do is I want to create a token object, which will be session dot get ID token dot get JWT token. And I want to add in a headers option. So we're going to add in headers right here. And we're going to say authorization will be token. I'm creating an object here just so we can simply destructure it whenever we do get the session. And also in future tutorials, I'll be showing you how you can require an API key. And this makes it more convenient for that. So if we go ahead and save this, we can then go into random numbers and we import use context. We now want to import the account context, which we just edited. So we want to import it in here. We can do that like this. We're going to import it from the local accounts file. And then right here at the top of our functional components, we're going to destructure the get session method, which we just worked on. We're going to use the use context hook for this. And we're going to pass an account context. So now what I want to do is I want to take this entire code and I want to copy it. And we can actually get rid of this asynchronous here. We then want to say get session, which return to promise. So we're going to do dot then. And this gives an asynchronous function. And inside of here, we can just paste in the code we just had. Inside of the parameters, we want to destructure headers and we want to pass those in right here. So now we can console log the headers. And if we save this, so if we go back to our website, if we try clicking fetch new number, we see our authorization object. And this is the JWT token that we can actually use to be passed into API Gateway. And Cognito handles all of this for us. We keep on clicking fetch random number. We're going to get a random number and we're actually authorized now. If we were to go back and we were to remove the headers from the request and we were to save this, if we go back to the website and we try again, we get an error. So fail to fetch. So this is how you're going to make sure that you, your users are logged in in order to access a specific API gateway endpoint. Thanks for watching this AWS tutorial. If you need help or have a video request, be sure to leave a comment down below or ask in the Worn Off Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description. If you want to learn more about AWS, consider clicking on one of the videos you see on your screen now.